Okay, 1998 GM 3800 engine, and we're going to do some Hall Effect testing. And this is going to be on the crankshaft sensor. This is a dual crank sensor. It has an 18x and a 3x signal. And uh, what I want to show is how to determine circuit design, whether or not it's pull up or pull down, how to do a bypass test, uh, how the waveform compares on a scope to a voltmeter, and can you use a voltmeter to determine whether or not you have a signal and then also the power and ground test. So starting, starting with this, we're gonna do the circuit design and the bypass test first. Okay, as, as far as uh, crankshaft sensor location, it lives in a really difficult spot. It's uh, down behind the crank pulley. And so what that means is, is our testing is gonna be done up at the ignition module, not at the sensor. Hard to see it, but there's the connector right there below that metal brace to the right. Very difficult location. You're certainly not going to get your test leads down in there without getting them wrapped around that that uh, serpentine belt when you crank the engine over or with the engine running. So all tests are going to be done at the module. Okay, the nice thing about this 3800 engine is they've all been set up this way that the two wires next to the bolt in the center. So this bolt in the center that holds the connector onto the module the one immediately to the left and the one immediately to the right of that center bolt is the 3x and 18x crank signals. So we're, we are T-pinned. So we're T-pinned on those two wires. We have two different channels connected, and let's take a look at what the waveform looks like. All right, I have the scope connected. Two different channels on the two different signals. Scope negative is connected to battery negative for all these tests. Go ahead and start it. Okay, good. Go ahead and shut it off. Take a look at what this waveform looks like. And what you're looking at in this picture is your 3X and your 18X signals. The 3X has a small, medium, and large window, as you can see in the yellow trace. And the 18X are 18 evenly spaced. So they call it a 3X because it's three pulses per 360 degrees of crank rotation and it's 18x because it's 18 signals per 360 degrees of crank rotation. So from from here to here between the cursors would be one rotation of that crank. Some things to note would be that both of those signals are going from zero to about seven volts. So the green trace is zero to seven the, red, uh, the yellow trace is 0 to 7. Both 3x and 18x signals are 7 volt square waves. The next thing that I want to show you is how do you determine whether or not these are pull up and pull down design. This is important when you do bypass testing because we need to know the polarity to connect our test light to to do a bypass test. Do we connect the test light to battery positive or do we connect the test light to battery negative? I'm going to show you how to determine circuit design. All right, just a little bit more on the circuit design with this and how the module uses these signals and why they're done this way. What this module is going to do is it's going to look at the 3x and the 18x signals together. And what it looks for is the number of transitions of the 18x between the window of the 3x if you look closely at these, I'll show you the, the single pulse first. And what you'll see is there is one transition of the 18X window within the 3X window. So one transition computer or module knows that that is the smaller the smallest of those windows and that's going to identify a specific coil to fire as soon as it sees that it knows which coil to fire if you look at the the uh, medium size square wave in the yellow trace so small medium and large if we look at that one you'll notice that there are two transitions of the 18x signal within that window and that's going to identify a specific coil to fire 
And then if we look at the largest window of the 3X, you'll notice there are one, two, three transitions within that window. The module is going to use that information and it knows within 120 degrees of crank rotation, that's between these signals, that's 120, this is 120, and this is 120, within 120 degrees of crank rotation, this module knows exactly which coil to fire. It's important to note that these two signals need to be acquired together during cranking to coordinate these signals for the computer or module to know which coil to fire. If you don't have both signals during cranking, this will be a no start. All right, to do circuit design on this, what you have to do is you have to unplug the crank sensor, which I've done. You can see the blue uh, weather pack piece sticking out. It's partially unplugged. It is unplugged. I didn't want to pull it out all the way, just difficult to get to, but it is unplugged. And what we want to do is we want to look at our voltage reading on the signal wires with the sensor unplugged. Okay, with the, uh, with the circuit unplugged, with the crank sensor unplugged, we're taking a look at the two signal wires. And you see the yellow trace is a flat line, about 7 volts. There's your scale right here. This is 6 volts right here. And your green trace is also flat line about seven volts. There's your green trace number. There's six volts right there, seven volts. Both of these are seven volt signals, zero to seven volt square waves. And what we know with the sensor unplugged, these are seven volt pull down design. What that means is the module sends out seven volts on both signal wires and the whole effect that's inside uh, and the transistor that's inside of this Hall effect is going to pull down these seven volt signals and make square waves out of them. Seven volt pull down design. To do a bypass test on these, you connect a test light to battery negative, touch on and off the signal wire, and we can make a signal. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, what I've done is I pulled up the RPM, the 3X engine speed, and the 18X activity on the scan tool, so this is backdoor information, this is process data. And when you do a bypass test on one of these, what you wanna do, test light to ground because we determined it was a pull down design. And I'm gonna take my test light on and off the 18X signal at the module, touch it on and off. And you can see that we're getting a change on the scan tool on the 18X signal. That is a good bypass test that tells you your, your wiring integrity is good. The 3X would be the same way. The only problem with some of these bypass tests, you need to understand on this design, it takes both signals at the same time for the computer to interpret RPM and to have the coils fire right. So when I do the 3X one, it's probably not going to respond. We'll try it. Touch this 3X on and off. No response. If I do them together, both the 18X and the 3X together, two different bypass tests. I should be able to make this thing respond on the RPM and the 3X. And you can see there it was right there. Computer interpreted an RPM signal. Computer then updated the 3X input. So you need to understand the limitations of the bypass test. If you're doing something that isn't normal, the computer may not update the scan tool, but there it is. That was a bypass test on the 3X and 18X signals. To show you what I was doing at the module itself, all I was doing was taking my test light, connect it to ground, test light is not going to light, and I was just touching this T-pin on and off. That was my 18X test, my 3X test, I actually had, can you hold that? Right there, all right, right there. My 3X test, I actually had to use two hands to do it, and what I was doing, here's my 3X signal with the yellow probe here, and I'm just using a jumper wire to ground, that's okay too. Test light on this one to ground, basically both, both of these were just pulling the signal to ground, and I was just touching them off to, on and off together, and I was making both signals Computer reacted, uh, actually one of the coils actually sparked, and the computer showed data PID updates across the board on RPM, 18X, and 3X. 
That's how you do a bypass test. Pull, down, hull effect, design. All right, back to the waveform. Just wanna show what this is gonna look like from a scope to a digital voltmeter. You see the waveform up top, that's the scope reading. But if you look down a little bit lower on this screen, you're gonna see our voltage readings that this top one, the yellow trace, you're looking at 5.5 volts, 5.6 volts. And then the green trace, you're looking at 4.3. So that's what you would see on a digital multimeter if you were to look at these signals. They're both zero to seven volt square waves. And what digital voltmeters read is an average of that signal. So something to keep in mind, you can still do no spark, no start diagnosis with a voltmeter on this kind of sensor. You just need to understand that you are not going to see the full zero seven volt square wave. You're only going to see an average of that. All right, to address a question that was just asked of me is why is the yellow trace 5.56 and the green trace 4.3 when they're both zero to seven volt square waves? And the answer is the way the signal is set up, really it's the duty cycle of the signal. If you look at the yellow trace, the yellow trace is high longer than it is low. And the green trace is actually pretty much 50-50. So the green trace are reading basically half the signal average which is 0, 07 and the on the yellow trace you're not because you're low a lot longer or a lot shorter period of time than you are high so your average is going to be a higher number on that yellow trace so that really the short answer would be dependent on the duty cycle of that signal your percentage of on time compared to off time will determine what your average voltage reading is all right, doing the uh, power and ground test now. With well, the nice thing about having a tool like this, this is uh, basically the Vantage Pro software that's in the Varus. And what's nice about this kind of tool is it gives you information. And the information I'm looking for is where does this crank sensor get its power and ground from? You see the crank sensor connector here. You see the crank sensor connector here, A, B, C, and D. It's a four pin crank sensor, two signals, sharing a power in the ground. And uh, that power in the ground actually comes from the ignition module. There's your ignition module connector. And what we're looking for is the ICM uh, plus 10 volt. That's your power, that's on pin N. And what we're looking for is the ICM positive. That's uh, uh, 10 volts, comes from the module on pin N. Pin N is the second pin over from the left on the connector, and that's what's gonna feed pin D on the, on the uh, crank sensor, it's power feed. And then uh, the sensor ground, which is uh, ICM negative, look at your module connector, look for ICM negative, it's right next to that, it's pin M, which is right next to pin N, so that's the third one from the left. So we're gonna put our T-pins on the second one to the, to the left and the third one to the left to check power and ground to this crank sensor. All right, so we're on the uh, crankshaft sensor, positive and negative wires, power feed and ground, which is supplied from the module. What we found is that connector view was actually upside down, so it was the, the two outer ones on the, on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side of the connector. In any case, we got those two T-pinned and we're gonna look at what those signals look like. And really all you need is the key on. Is my key on right now? It looks like my key's on. What we're looking at in this picture with the key on is we are looking at a supply of 10.5 volts on the yellow trace and 0 0.06 on the green trace. That would be a good power and a good ground. It said 10 volt feed was the the uh, Hall Effect power feed and the ground 0.06, if you want 100 millivolts or less on a sensor ground, those look good. Good power, good ground to the Hall Effect. And that's it, Hall Effect testing GM3800.